Welcome to 40 Fit Radio, where we bring you science-based, common-sense information regarding fitness, health, and lifestyle for the 40-plus community. I'm your host, Darren Deaton, doctor of physical therapy with 28 years clinical practice experience, starting strength coach, and certified CrossFit trainer. Forty Fit Radio, real people, real fitness, real health. Hey, welcome back to Forty Fit Radio. This is your host Trent Jones, and I've got Darren Deaton with me. This is the first episode of the Foundation series. Um, this will be episode two. Strength matters. So, Darren, why does strength matter? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> I, I always got to be ready when he does that. So, Darren, why does strength matter? Okay, so so today we're going to, in this episode, we're basically going to cover the 10 general physical skills. The 10 general physical sc- skills were created by Jim Crawley and Bruce Evans of Dynamax. I want to give those guys credit for creating uh, the just the just the description of these skills uh, years ago. So, um, we're going to talk about those 10 general physical skills and why I think uh, strength matters so much in the master's individual. So let's go over the skills first, Trent, and get those covered. And then from there, we'll build on, uh, the, on the concept. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, all right. So, so here's a listing of the 10 general physical skills, strength, power, speed, endurance, stamina, flexibility, accuracy, agility, balance, and coordination. So as a physical therapist and also as a, as a coach, a personal trainer, coach, strength coach, CrossFit coach, whatever, what have you, um, I, I think about these 10 general physical skills every day of my working life. You know, whether I'm in practice with my patients in the orthopedic clinics or whether I'm in the gyms, I'm trying to impact one or many of these or all of these 10 general physical skills while we're training individuals. But when you look at these skills as a whole, my philosophy, and I think it's consistent with a lot of other coaches' philosophies that have studied these skills and these physical traits, let's just call them physical traits, that one of them trumps them all. Because without that one physical trait, you really can't do anything else. And that trait is strength. So does that make sense, Trent? Yeah, so... I guess, could we think about it sort of like a pyramid? You know, so you've got all of these skills, but not all of them are necessarily organized. Uh, not all of them uh, can follow without the other one, right? So strength is right. the base of the pyramid. Right. I think I think they all are very, very important. You know, if you don't have balance, you can't stand upright, then obviously you can't function in life. So so they all have, um, I, let's just say that they not, you cannot... Can you live with any without any of these skills? You probably could live without higher levels of these skills. They all do matter, but the most important of these and really the foundation of all the other skills is strength. So without strength, what you, what use is balance? Without strength, what use is coordination? Without strength, what use is agility? It is the foundation, the basic physical trait or principle that allows us to do everything else in life. And by the way, as we're going to talk in this episode about, it is also the trait that declines the fastest and the most as we age. Yeah, that's interesting. So all of these skills are interdependent in a sense. However, strength is the is the basis for all of for everything else. Yeah, I, I yeah. think they all kind of conjugate off of strength. They all they are synergistic in their nature. But the center, the let's just say uh, the center of this universe is strength. You know, yeah. in the individual, and especially in the aging individual, individual and the masters. And so let let's talk a little bit about what strength actually is. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think, uh, we talk, you know, just in, in popular culture, we talk about a lot of different kinds of strength, right? Uh, wow. She's really strong mentally or emotionally. So there's, there, we have a lot of different concepts of strength, but we're talking about a very specific word here, a very specific strength. And, and that is 
Yeah, and I mean, not to geek us out on the physics side of it, but because <laughs> we don't want to lose too many people on this. And but basically, st- strength is we can correlate it to a physics quantity, and that physics quantity is force. Force in physics is equal to mass times acceleration. So basically think about it this way, Trent, that that strength is the ability to produce force against your, with your own body first, body weight strength, but then against an external object. So it's the ability to produce force against an external object, move an object. Okay. Cause there's gotta be movement involved in that. I yeah. mean, there is isometric strength, which is holding something. There's different types of muscle contraction. We're not going to go into that in this episode, but what we're really talking about is strength is the ability to produce force, sure. plain and simple. And, and the only thing that we're producing force against is gravity. Yeah. In a non-gravity oriented environment or an anti-gravity or a, a vacuum, there, there is no need for strength because we're not working against anything. So, so gravity is really what we're talking about working against here. And, um, and our strength always works in a vertical plane against the gravitational force. Yeah. So just to merely stand up and remain upright, we have to overcome the force of gravity that's right. trying to pull us down to the center of the earth. Right. And, and exactly. And, you know, we could, we could dial this into its simplest concept. We could titrate it down to its simplest concept. And that is, if you take an 85-year-old individual, their ability to go from sit sitting position. Well, let's just start from the basics, from a lying position Sure. to Get transfer to a sitting position and then to go into a standing position. That is all dependent upon strength. Now it may just be body weight strength, the ability to, to produce force against their own body weight and move it and be mobile in their life. But at the same time, it is uh, an expression of strength. And so, you know, the reason why I put this as our first podcast in the foundation series is these next nine podcasts after the origins of 40, 40 fit is that it is the, it is the one physical trait that declines the fastest and can potentially have the greatest impact on the quality, not just the quantity, but the quality of our aging in the master's population. Yes. Yeah, so we, so strength is a combination of your nervous system, you know, firing the muscles to move them around your body and move your skeleton, but it's also dependent on muscle mass, right? You have to have something, some sort of mass to contract, to move your skeleton through space and to pick stuff up and to move around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's absolutely correct. Um, and, and when you think about it, okay, so, so let's, we're, we'll go to that next conversation and that next conversation is okay. If in the 10 general physical skills, we, we now could agree that strength is probably the foundation of all those other skills. It's the center of the physical trait universe. If we call it that, then the next thing would be, well, what produces strength in our body? And like you said, there are two types of adaptation. There's a neurological adaptation, which is the ability of our central nervous system and our peripheral nerves and our motor units and to fire, um, to, to contract the muscle bellies in our bodies that move our skeleton, like you, like you um, explained it. And then there is the muscle mass, as you said, that's within those individual muscle bellies and how much muscle mass we have. And so then that leads us down this road. And that road is basically this, is that muscle mass and strength declines with aging and over time. And and now we know more than ever based on the science of aging and strength and and muscle mass and, and strength production that sarcopenia, which is the loss of the individual muscle cells as we age, is probably the primary driver to the loss in percentage of strength over time. And that it gradually declines, but there's a rapid decline after certain ages. So, you know, there's several things that happen. Number one, there's there's sarcopenia, which is the, the loss in muscle mass cells as we age. And it's a natural loss. Everyone is going to experience that if they don't strength train. Now, the beauty behind this, and I, I'm, I'm getting the, the cart before the horse here, but the beauty behind this too is that you can actually get stronger as you age. If you're an untrained individual 
and you're in your 50s and you've never done strength training, you can actually get stronger as you age to a certain extent up to your maximum genetic potential within that chronological age and that timeline. But the key there is you have to be strength training. You To try to slow down the decline of loss of muscle cell sarcopenia and to slow down the decline of increasing body fat and also um, decreasing percentage loss year over year and also the decrease in the number of and size of fast twitch fibers versus slow twitch fibers there's a lot of things that are happening here physiologically then you have to strength train um, and so and that's that's why we picked um, strength, or I pick strength as the as the most important foundational principle in a master's program. Yeah, and so with when when it comes to organizing our our training or picking a training modality to use um, to improve our health, we can train for strength with specific you know strength training movements, but. Uh, Training in other ways doesn't necessarily contribute to strength. So, in other words, in other words, correct, you can pick up a barbell, for instance, right. to train your strength. But if you jog, you can affect other skills, but you're not going to necessarily increase right. your strength. Right. You're, in fact, you're you're actually going to get a reduction in strength. It's it's actually uh, deleterious to um, your strength um, uh, production and your muscle mass size, uh, the amount of muscle that you have as an individual, as a master's. Yeah, I, I think, you know, think about it. Th this is the way I think about it. I try, I, I try to look at this from a real pragmatic sense. In our lives as, as masters, we, we start to get to the point to where we start to realize that we should be investing versus spending. We do that in our financial lives. We do that in our family lives. We do that in our jobs, our avocation, our occupation. We do that in our emotional lives and spiritual lives. And at some point, I think we, we've got to do that in our physical lives too. The biggest bang for a master's buck is first developing a strength program as the foundation of their fitness program. Anyone can do it. All people should be doing it at any fit starting fitness level. You don't need a physician's approval or authorization or clearance to strength train. Now, if you've got some underlying significant health issue that creates instability in joints, it's, it's an unstable medical condition, then we might want to get your physician's feedback on that and discuss that with your physician before we start training you. But for 99.9% .9 of the human population, over 40, um, or anyone, they can start a strength program. And they can do that in the sense of body weight strength, if that's the scalable level, level we have to be at. Uh, for the much, much older population, or it can be actually grabbing a barbell and doing barbell strength training. Um, so there's a lot of different approaches to that, but no matter what, strength training is the key. So let's, let's, let's build this case for why strength training is the key from a research standpoint, because we talked about this podcast being a podcast based on evidence. So here, here's some of the data. So one thing that we know for sure is that the percentage of fast twitch fibers in young men is about 50 to, 50 to 60% greater than it is. Let me rephrase that. So let's talk facts here, since we said we were going to do this on an evidence-based model, this podcast. So the percentage of fast twitch fibers um, in young men is about 50 to 60% of the total fiber rate on the average. In older men, it's about 30 to 40%. So they basically... Older men just naturally, because of their age, have lower power levels. And power is the ability to express your strength quickly over time. So it's a time-based unit um, when we think about the physics of it. So if someone's more powerful, that means they, they can explode their strength very quickly. Yeah. So if someone punches you really, really fast and really hard, there's a lot of power in that punch. Yeah. Someone punches you with less force... Okay, maybe the same speed, they have less power, don't they? Right. Because the numerator is work over time. And so they're just a less powerful individual. Um, so the, the other thing that we know, too, is that there's an overall loss or reduction in muscle mass volume as we age. And that decreases slowly after the age of 30, Trent. Not, not after the age of 40 or 50, but 
after the age of 30. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Coming don't. up fast on the three zero there. <laughs> yeah. You are like less than one year. So this Ugh. guy's a pup, man. But, <laughs> but, um, but still, yeah. I mean, I mean, it, 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 there's a decline that starts to happen before we even notice it happening. Um, the other thing that we know is that after the age, by the age of 60, there's a three to 6% reduction in mass per decade in life. And by the age of 50, 10 years earlier, there's an average of 10% reduction in overall muscle mass. Um, as, as basically this chronological timeline continues to move forward, okay, the decline is faster and it even accelerates greater after the age of 70. So the sarcopenia, all these other factors, hormonal factors influence it too. As we age, obviously hormones drive all of the body systems of our bodies, our yeah. endocrine system is so important in how it it regulates all of our body functions. So we're also um, experiencing a natural chronological decline in hormone production. All of the anabolic hor- hormones that grow our muscles and our body, they just continue to decline as we age. So my goal in promoting strength first which might be different than what other programs and fitness models uh, promote is that number one, it's the fastest thing to decline. And number two, it's the hardest thing to build. Yeah. Why wouldn't we start with that first? That's our biggest bang for buck when it comes to training investment. Yeah. So we're really just with, with strength training, we're looking at that end of life slope, if you will. Right. That decrease that, you know, it's basically a slope that gets gradually steeper and steeper until it becomes a cliff. Right. Right. Yeah. So with strength training, we're really just trying to flatten that slope out and and keep it as flat as we can and maybe even try to grow it a little bit, grow our capabilities, our strength over time so that when we get to the end of our lives, we've got a, a we've got more function, we've got more capability. We're able to use all of these 10 physical skills in uh, living our lives and doing the things that we love to do. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, here, here's a little paradoxical thought line here. I mean, follow me down this rabbit hole a little bit, Trent. I, you know, think about it. Most guys that are in their most guys or ladies that are in their fifties, forties or fifties or, or sixties. Um, they're not necessarily thinking about their physical fitness and their, 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 their bodies as if it's in, it's in its peak. Yeah. As, as if it's if actually better than it's ever been. Um, they're actually thinking um, in the way that their philosophy is about their body is that, you know, I kind of lived my glory days in my 20s and 30s and late teens, and now I'm kind of on the downward decline. You know, I, th- I think we just need to be thinking exactly the opposite. If you take an untrained individual or even someone that's done exercise, we'll talk about exercise versus training later again. I mean, we got to have that conversation. Yeah, that's another <laughs> but, rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, it's a deep rabbit hole. Um, but, I, you know, if what our goal is basically is you can take that individual who's untrained or just been doing exercise programs and you can actually, number one, increase their strength, increase their muscle mass, improve their quality of life, improve the quality of their longevity, possibly the quantity of their longevity. That's less predictable than the quality for sure. We believe that longevity is probably more related to genetics and environmental factors. Other factors uh, affect that too, but quality definitely we can improve upon and they can actually improve over time in their forties, fifties and into their sixties before we start to see some of that gradual decline that we see in physical function, health and fitness over time. And you're right. Our goal is to max that thing out as much as we can so that the quality is key. You know, we got to start changing our populations attitude about this. We got to start that the master's population attitude, you know, I'm in my fifties and I'm crazy strong right now. I'm not as strong as I want to be, but I'm strong. You, I mean, you've seen yeah, this. Squat, I, yeah. And, and I still got physical function. On my 50th birthday, I did a standing back flip. So, you know, uh, I mean, my college gymnastics background, you know, that's one of those guys. Hey, guys, hold my beer. Watch this. You know, <laughs> you wonder. <laughs> don't try hey, this at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, don't iPhone video record the first attempt yeah. on that deal. <laughs> Do the second attempt. The first attempt, I might crash. But, but at the same time, I mean, we got to start thinking about our bodies differently. Now, I'm not 20 anymore. I'm not 30 anymore. 
but I'm definitely not a hundred either. So, and I'm not, I don't consider myself old. My body does feel differently than it did when I was in my twenties. And so I have to learn how to train differently. But the number one thing that we want to focus on with our programming, with the 40 fit community is your strength needs to be methodical. You need to have a training program. It needs to be well thought out. It needs to be organized. And in my opinion, it needs to be structured in a manner that is um, output driven. It's goal driven and, and that it's not random in its nature. Sure. So I want to, I want to take you back to, to those 10 general physical skills that we spelled out at the beginning. Uh, let's talk about endurance and stamina. Sure. Because, uh, you know, I, I, I think there's a uh, general sense, you know, when we look at the popular media that, uh, hey, we need, we need cardio, right? We need heart function. And I, I think it's important to point out that when we're talking about training for strength, it does not necessarily mean that we're not training other skills either. Correct. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think um, we, we don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater or, or, or we don't have to exclude one area or another. Now, I do think that this is definitely true. If, if we are significantly under strength, in other words, um, you know, our strength values are very low for our size of body and, our, and just, you know, our overall stature and size and everything, then, then our number one focus and most of our, let's just say, recovery resources – And our stressors should be centered around the strength program, not conditioning. We can build the conditioning later. And and there's a lot of data to show, too, that that strength training, whether it be barbell training, body weight training, high-intensity interval training with loads, all those things impact the endocrine system. They also improve the cardiovascular system, aerobic capacity, the ability to have better endurance and stamina. And let's remember here that endurance and stamina is strictly a function of strength. Yeah. Without yeah. strength, you can't have stamina because stamina is strength represented over time. And endurance is your ability to do cardiovascular type activities over time. But they both rely from a physics and science standpoint on a strength base. Athletes or individuals who have better strength are better endurance athletes. And we're, we're figuring out that more and more over time, that that the more strength an individual has, they're better able to produce force, and then force equates to power, and then, then equates to stamina, and then, then equates to endurance. And so we, we're, we're not going to, you know, our number one focus with an individual first should be strength, but it doesn't mean that we're not also impacting endurance and stamina at the same time, because we right. are. We, we definitely are. Now, if we're doing mm-hmm. endurance training only or cardio only, we're not impacting strength. There's no data to show that endurance or cardiovascular training, let's say like long, slow distance running, cycling, um, swimming, those types of things. Yeah, it, it'll impact strength to a, to a minimum base. Yeah. But in regards to real strength, strength that is of a higher level, and I'm not talking about a power lifter. I'm just talking about reasonable strength for longevity and quality of lifestyle and to be able to do more. It's not impact. There's no correlate there. We do know that strength training does correlate to improved endurance and stamina capacity. Sure. So let, let's parse that out with a practical example. If I throw on my tennis shoes and I hit the pavement for a you know a jog, and I decide to jog a mile or five miles, whatever it is, you know something sure, that we sure. would we would generally consider a a cardio type uh, event. event, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so. I'm, I'm running along at a particular cadence. I'm striking my feet against the ground. I'm pushing off the ground. Against gravity. Against gravity, against the resistance of the pavement. Uh, there we have force production. And our, our, our endurance is our ability to continue to exert those little bits of force production for a long period of time, right? Correct. So, Correct. so what happens if I increase the ability to produce force. So, so let's put it this way. Every step that I take is 
a certain percentage of my maximum ability to produce force. Correct. There's Correct. some number that I can produce. There's some number of force. Mathematical in my legs. equation yeah, there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a hundred percent. Let's just say. I love it because it's, it's pure science. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hundred pounds. Let's just say as an example is right. the maximum amount of force I can produce. And every time that I take a step, I'm exerting, you know, 25 pounds or so 25%, X, of, whatever that, whatever, is. whatever that yeah. X is, you yeah. know, it's a small percentage of my right. total. So if I increase my maximum force production from 100 pounds to 200 pounds, right. what happens to the percentage of every step that I take? Well, I think, I, th- I think what we would say in a general sense is this. Stronger individuals are better at everything they do. And I love this quote. If, I don't know how many of you guys out there know who Mark Ripto is, but he created Starting Strength. It's a barbell system. And like he says, this quote's from him. Um, stronger people are harder to kill and more useful in general. And that is so true. Strength will drive the improvement in all other physical characteristics, physical capacities. Now, here's here's where people like to argue about this or like to get in discussions about this. Well, I don't think strength necessarily correlates to a better endurance athlete. Well, there's probably a tipping point there to where if an athlete or an individual gets too large, too strong, they become too biased towards being a pure strength athlete or individual to where they lose some of their ability to be effective as an endurance athlete or in in endurance endeavors. Sure. You know, a a guy that's 5'11", like I'm I'm 5'11", okay? So if I weigh 260 and I'm pure muscle mass, I've probably tip the scale of being that size to be a good endurance athlete. I'm just, I'm I'm just carrying too much muscle mass. So there is a balance there, but I think for most, for most individuals, that's never going to be an issue. Sure. They're never going to reach that level. You know, the average individual is just not. So all individuals, all masters can benefit no matter what their endeavor is in building their strength foundation first. And then in those other endeavors like swimming, cycling, running, you know, technique is so important. Learning the sport is so important. If they're doing triathlons or CrossFit or whatever it is, there's skill and mobility and other things that come into play along with teaching their body how to use the metabolic pathways. And we'll, we'll talk about (laughs) more of that in future episodes um, in endurance training and, and cardiovascular training. But, but yeah, I mean, strength is the answer to not only the answer to physical capacity, but it's really also think about it, Trent's the answer to most phys- most problems, physical problems. I mean, if 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 you've got a bad back, bad knees or shoulder or other body area, my number one recommendation to you is get stronger. And that's not only coming as from as a strength coach, but also as a doctor of physical therapy. I mean, and we're going to talk about that more in future podcasts. But but strong bodies basically carry more muscle mass. They have a more youthful expression of human capacity, and it helps to self-treat a lot of the physical problems that we that we experience throughout our lives. Wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me that I herniated a disc five years ago. The doctor said never lift more than 15 pounds. Well, I, I would say that your doctor was wrong. So <laughs> Um, and I've been wrong many times telling my patients some things, you know, I, we, we, God, another, again, like we talk about, there's a rabbit hole we could, you know, go down into, but how we talk to our patients and how we, how we learn ourselves, how to deal with our own medical issues or physical problems. Um, my number one recommendation in my orthopedic practice today is you need to get strong. You know, you got a choice, you know, we know that getting stronger and resistive training helps with pain. It helps with pain management. It improves the endocrine um, production of the hormones that are, um, let's just say, uh, they improve pain perception. Okay, it improves the sense of well being, it improves depression. Resistive training improves all those things. So, my number one recommendation to my patient population is you can be strong and painful or weak and painful. You decide, but I bet you what's going to happen along the way. And I tell them this in this way, you're going to end up being strong and have a lot less pain. And so we know again, that strength not only makes us more youthful, 
and makes us more functional and useful in life, but it also helps us to avoid some of these physical problems or to treat some of these physical problems that we're going to experience as we age. When we're talking about joints and articular cartilage and and um, uh, wear and tear in our bodies, arthritis, those types of things. So, um, you know, building muscle mass combined with a healthy diet and um, uh, and, and combined with the proper rest and quality of lifestyle, it helps to fight off a lot of medical conditions. You know, things like, uh, I mean, uh, metabolic syndrome, for example, um, you know, prediabetes and diabetes, hypertension, high blood pressure, hypercholesterol, um, osteopenia and osteoporosis, all of these disorders. And, uh, you know, like Dr. Sullivan's book, Barbell Prescription, Shout out to Dr. Sullivan and Andy Andy Baker, authors of uh, Barbell Prescription, probably the prolific uh, text right now on strength training and the older population, the the 40 plus population. Um, You know, we know that in in his book, in the book, they talk about the fact that we can impact all of these medical conditions by doing one simple thing at first, and that is resistive training, which builds strength. Yeah. So we'll link to that book in the show notes. Um, it's a oh, very cool. good resource. Um, yeah, there's, that's a lot, of, a lot of stuff to unpack in that book for, for further reading. But yeah, I, I think one of the examples that, that Dr. Sullivan makes in that book is uh, you can think of muscle mass as this sort of big physiological sink for disposing of all of the, the all of the, uh, the 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 material that we take in with our food, the the blood sugar, everything, uh, it's it's a giant sink for disposing of waste in our body and using energy and uh, and, and yeah. creating function for the body. You know, both sure. in a practical way, like we're talking about moving around and m- moving through our lives, but also um, internally when we're talking about just the basic body processes, the basic metabolism, Correct. Uh, muscle mass is, is integral to all of these things. Well, I kind of look at it this way and I, I started thinking about this probably four or five years ago. And I, 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 I don't know where I heard this. I, I would give credit to whoever I heard this from, if I could remember where I heard it. And then I started to think about it more and more and started to do some research on it. And that is this, we, we now believe that the, the body's muscle system, the muscle mass, the entirety of the muscle mass, w- really probably operates as one large organ in the human body. Just like the integumentary system, the skin that covers your body is an organ. Um, your heart and all of the blood vessels represent an organ, okay, an organ, an organ system. Your brain, your spinal cord, and all the peripheral nerves, it represents an organ. And it has, these, all these organs serve, serve certain functions. Now we recognize that the body's muscular system represents one large organ, and the amount of muscle mass that an individual's body carries can influence all these other organ functions, primarily through the endocrine system, through the hormonal system. The more muscle mass an individual has, and the more that individual uses that muscle mass, the more hormone production they're producing. And those hormones are the links to anti-aging. Those hormones are the things that keep us feeling vibrant and active and useful in life. So I kind of look at it this way. If you want a big bang for your buck and investment in your quality of life as a master's, the key is build that organ, build that muscle mass system and grow that muscle mass system. And I would highly recommend that we do that first. We do that first in any fitness program. If you've got a personal trainer, if you've got someone that you're working with in your community, they should be putting you on a outcome, goal-oriented, driven, and my recommendation would be a barbell program because I think that everyone can lift a barbell and it's readily available in most communities from the very young to the very old and get on a resistive training program. We'll we'll talk a little bit more about that. I believe in the next episode, we're going to talk about barbell training and strength development. But I think that, that, um, that's the key that, um, you know, let's, let's think about it this way as we age barring, some form of neurological disorder like senile dementia, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. And we know that even those things, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, MS, and some of these other uh, central nervous system disorders that we can impact and improve those disorders with resistance training. 
you know, and we know that we can impact, sure. it, impact those things. But barring something like that, you know, the number one goal with your strength training is that, you know, you're going to be able to care for yourself in a very quality oriented way for the rest of your life. And that's the goal. We're never too old to start strength training. Yeah, there's a practical aspect to training for strength first, and that is that it can be scaled, you know, to a very minute degree. Um, we can start with body weight exercises, as you mentioned. We can start with uh, something as small as, a, as a, a broomstick, right? So it really doesn't matter what level you're starting at. But start. <laughs> you can you can start. There's Absolutely. something for you, and it can be in you know it can be incrementally. Uh, increased over time with very fine weights, right? We can, we can add five pounds to a bar. We can add two and a half pounds to a bar. We could add one pound or sure. half a pound, right? Yeah. There's, it, it, there, there's a large range for us to scale strength training specifically to, um, to any person, regardless of your training background, yeah, which one, we don't necessarily have with other training modalities, right? You, right, you can right. only sprint in, in so many ways, right? Yeah, right. You can only or it's sprint, not a sprint, sprint, right? Right. And then it becomes a jog or <laughs> then it's a, jog, a run right? or a jog and a walk. <laughs> I mean, you're scaling running over time. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, think about it this way. I mean, when you think about strength training, people, people want to think about machines and going in a gym and all that stuff. And that is where we want to get people eventually. But if you're an untrained individual and you're listening to this podcast right now and you're over the age of 40 or you're under the age of 40, it really doesn't matter to me. My goal is, is that you recognize that you should be doing strength training. And so if you're 65 and you're a woman and you can't stand up from a chair without the use of your arms, we're going to start doing sit elevated sit to stands and a squat method to try to get you stronger so that you can go from a sitting to standing position. That's what I do in my clinics. I might even put you on a leg press machine with the percentage of your body weight and build your strength over time until you can eventually squat an object. You can squat something external and now you're producing force or strength against an external object. Like we talked about the description of strength earlier. And then that just continues to graduate over time and progress over time to where eventually you have that 65 year old client that never thought they could get under a barbell. And she's the, the, like, like one of Matt Reynolds uh, trainees, I believe she's in her, how old is she? Uh, uh, he's, he's got a, a, at least one trainee that's in her eighties. Yeah. She's in yeah. her eighties. I think that she's the organist of, of, um, his church and, and, uh, and she trains with the barbell, you yeah. know, but she never thought she could have, she could do that at first. So you got to start somewhere, but you definitely got to start. That's the key. You got to start. And so, um, uh, in our next episode, we're going to talk about barbell training, right? Yeah. Trent, how do we do this? Yeah. Where do we start? What do we do? Day one. Okay. I'm ready to strength train. Now what? Right. And our, our goal in, in episode number th in episode number three is that we're going to bring you a demonstrative way, a simple way to approach developing that strength. We're going to lay out for you also a program that has worked for thousands of people. Um, all you got to do is have access to a local gym that's got some bars and a rack and some bumper plates or some cast iron or iron plates. And even without that, if you're starting below that, we're going to show you how to do that too in our next episode. And so we'd love to having you on this episode, man, I, I could talk for hours about strength. Um, Trent, couldn't you? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm very passionate about this. Um, I'm not passionate at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't tell. <laughs> no, I, I, I love it. I mean, I mean, I, I could geek out on this stuff for, for hours, just talking about all the different characteristics of strength and how we can impact people. Certainly. Well, let's, that's a good place to stop for now, I think. And we'll, we'll expand on all of these topics in greater detail in the future. But uh, for now, as always, follow us on the Instagrams at 40 Fit Radio. That's 40 Fit Radio. You can also follow us on Facebook at the 40 Fit Masters Community. Again, 40 Fit Masters Community. And of course, make sure you're subscribing to our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, whatever your podcast outlet of choice is. We are 40 Fit Radio. Subscribe, leave us a review, let us know what you think, and we'll see you next episode. Thanks. Thanks.